Could temperatures change that quickly? How long before glaciers stop feeding these lakes? By recent estimates, the year 2030. But Dan Fagri may revise that once he gets a good look at the Blackfoot Glacier. And we're gonna go to a ridge across the way and see if we can get to the area where the glacier collapsed. So this is gonna be our first up close look at it. So this is gonna be something we're eager to see. It's day two of Dan Fagri's expedition. And already, the signs reveal a startling fact. Glacier National Park and areas like it are warming much faster than the rest of the planet. One thing that's pretty typical of mountains like this is that they're warming at two to three times the global rate. So that has profound implications for the types of change that we're gonna see in mountain ecosystems. The likely reasons, more humidity, fewer clear nights, and less snow cover on the mountaintops. To get more evidence, Dan also looks right beside the path. Important clues hide in the trees. Trees are a wonderful uh, accomplice for us, so to speak, in deciphering the mystery of climate changes. Many of these trees are 400 years old. Some in the park are 900. A core sample from this tree can reveal a long history of fire, avalanche, insect outbreaks, drought, and wet periods. And if we do this for a whole host of trees, get, say, several hundred of these kind of cores, we can tell what the whole forest has been experiencing. We can reconstruct drought periods from 400 years ago. So this is a window into the past. What's immediately obvious, the trees are on the move. For centuries, persistent snow has kept conifers back from the flower-filled meadows. With warmer weather and less persistent snow, the meadows are under siege. Well, what's gonna happen is that these trees will continue to be successful in invading these open areas. So eventually, you'll see a kind of a sloping invasion that eventually, from both sides, meets in the middle, and then you've cut off that meadow. So this is clearly a result of a changing climate. These things could not have done this for hundreds of years prior to this. Smaller meadows will mean less food. Many plants here are edible, berries and roots. Glacier lily, prime bear food. If this continues, you'll have some consequences for valued wildlife species like, like grizzly bears. Are bears threatened by these changes? It's Kate Kendall's job to find out. And she's found a revolutionary way of doing it. That's a good sample. I think it might be grizzly. Kate takes hair samples from trees that grizzlies and black bears like to rub on. This is really a great rub tree. It's had a lot of use from bears. It's got a lot of bite marks on it and claw marks. A few pieces of barbed wire ensure she gets all the DNA she needs. From just a few hairs that have roots on them, we can get information about the species, sex, and individual identity of the bears. No one knows why different bears like to rub against the same tree. 
but remote cameras may provide some clues. They've captured remarkable footage of bears rubbing. Footage beyond Kate's imagination. The first footage that we got was just uh, unbelievably amusing. We just couldn't believe our lucky stars that we had captured this behavior on film. Every time we go check a camera and bring the film back, it's like, you know, Christmas and Easter and, and everything combined. Perhaps the bears are scent marking. Perhaps it just feels good. Either way, the small pieces of wire placed on the trees capture hair. The DNA from that hair tells us how much bears rely on glacier. The National Park was only a small portion of the wilderness studied, but it holds nearly half of the grizzly bears. Forty-six percent of the individual bears that we identified were just in Glacier National Park, which was 13 percent of the study area. So a very dense population in Glacier. Around 240 grizzlies live in the park area. They depend on plants, like those found in meadows, for about 80 percent of their diet. If those meadows shrink, so may the park's bear population. But Kate remains optimistic. Because grizzly bears are omnivores, they're better able to adapt to climate change. I think their prospects are, are pretty good here. Not all of the park's mammals may be as lucky. It seems one of this area's most remarkable creatures depends on snow beyond anyone's expectations. The wolverine. Wolverines resemble miniature bears. Technically, they are weasels, but with incredible strength. The park supports the highest density of wolverines ever reported in the contiguous U.S. Only about 40 animals. Biologist Jeff Copeland travels high in Glacier National Park. This is it. This is where they like to live. Jeff investigates wolverine habitat. He does it to find out how much wolverines rely on this landscape. So far, the results are astonishing. There's only been a handful of wolverine studies done um, in the world, let alone in North America. We're just beginning to develop a, you know, a real strong understanding of this animal's role in the ecosystem. The Rocky Mountain Research Station supported a four-year project. Jeff and his team tracked wolverines to their dens in the dead of winter, when only the bravest entered the park. They used GPS collars, as well as surgically inserted radio transmitters. This work began to reveal a remarkable life history. They found the young stay with mom for eight to nine months. Then they may spend a year with the father. From him, they likely learn how 